DaVinci Resolve just released its latest beta, 18.5, and today we're going to talk about a few of our favorite features. Let's jump right into it. So this first feature is auto transcription. This is super nice. Um, so this is some example footage that we are um, putting together a video for. This is, will be coming out soon about our short film. But in the meantime, we have auto generated uh, transcription. And so how that works is you just right click here on the clip that you are going to be using. As you can see, we have a couple talking videos here. This is super nice for any type of video that you have a lot of talking in, a wedding ceremony, a podcast, a YouTube video. Um, a vlog, just anything. Anyway, you right click, you come down here to auto transcription, transcribe, it will do its magic super quick, and there you have it. And as you can see that you have all the text from everything Jackson said. So this is super nice. It saves so much time because I can just look at the script that we have for this video. I look at what he says. A quick rundown of how this works is you pretty much just highlight the part that you want in the video. So this is creating an in and out point. Um, of what Jackson's saying. From there, you can just press this button and it appends it at the end, or you can drag it down. So if you want to just, if you're trying to search for something that Jackson said, you can just press that word and it'll start playing there. Press that word and it'll start playing there. Um, and so a couple other features is when you highlight it, and this is something you might not see first time around, but you highlight it, you can right click, edit it if it made a mistake, and delete it. So when you delete it, it'll take it out of that part of the video. So when you put it in, it's now not in there. And then a couple other things is super nice is the remove silence. So it removes all the silent portions, which just gets rid of the unnecessary breaks and makes it easier for your edit. And then two other things is search. So you can search for what, uh, you can search for something that was said super nice, saves so much time. And the last thing is export. You can export this into a file where you can have the transcript, you can have everything that was said. So if you have a podcast, you can export it and have the script. That's auto transcription, super nice. It just saves so much time. And then going from there is the other feature that's helped a lot is the auto captions. Um, before you had to do it manually and time it perfectly, but this is super nice. You highlight the parts that you need captions for and then you come up here to timeline, and then you go to create subtitles from audio. And then here it shows the 14 different languages, which is a new feature, which is super amazing. These are the different languages that you are now able to use. And then, so, and it can do auto, so you can just keep on auto. There's a couple of different features, but I like to keep these the same, just so, because that's, I feel like that's the best way to do it. Create, takes a second, and, and boom, there you go. We have all of our captions, and you can see right here. Boom, saves so much time, super convenient. You can go into it, make edits, change the font, and change colors, sizing, tracking, everything that you can normally do. This just saves so much time. That's just something that I noticed with these new features. It's just a time saver. That's all for auto captions. And now Jackson's gonna talk about a few other features. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about the next two features in DaVinci Resolve. So going over to my screen right now, um, the first feature I'm going to talk about is a new relight feature and I'm going to show you how to set up your node tree and how I have used it for um, specific clips. So right here for my first clip, this is a clip from a wedding that we recently had done. So this is my original node tree right here, uh, it just uses three nodes, this one has my uh, color space transform, the third node has my LUT and then the first node has just uh, primary changes to it. So when you're working with log footage, this is how I like to set up my node tree. So the first two, I'm just gonna move back a little bit just to create some space. I'm gonna remove that uh, link. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add two nodes right there. And so what I'm gonna do is attach this one to node two. And then at this point, I'm gonna add a parallel mixer just in between here, um, just for a little bit of organization. And then this is how I like to like position everything so it's a little bit easier to see. So I got that connected. And then all you're pretty much gonna do is take this one, or you're gonna, I'm sorry, you're gonna apply your relight into that second node, and then you're gonna apply the relight again into the third node. Okay, so now everything's connected, and then I'm just gonna make a few adjustments. So I'm gonna connect this first one to the top of this one. So you're connecting the first node to the third, and then after that, you're gonna connect the second one back to the third in the second green option. 
And all I'm gonna do is change um, in my second one, uh, in the relight effect, you're gonna select output surface map. So now that's selected, it's gonna toggle off all the options for that. And then what you're gonna do is go into that third node and you're gonna change this surface map from use internal to use input to. Okay, so at this point, you have three different options of how you want, you could relight your uh, clip. So you have directional, point source, and spotlight. And for me, I'm gonna choose directional. And at this point, this will change in a second. Um, okay, so now it just changed. Now you can see, you can move this around and it reanalyzes it. And then you can just change kind of where you want your clip to be highlighted and what sections you want to relight. So for me, I'm just gonna bring it about right here. So as you go in, it brings up the intensity and as you go out, it brings out, uh, brings down the intensity. You're just emulating how far of the light source you want, or sorry. It's just pretty much creating the distance and how far you want your light source to be. So let's say I want it right there. And all I'm gonna do, so I have that. So you wanna see the new, the image adjustment that you made or back to the original image, you click relighting map preview. And so from that point, you can toggle on and off um, how you want to view. And then you click on your third node and then you just come down to your primaries and just make any adjustments that you need. So for me, I wanna bring up the gamma just a little bit, bring up the gain and then the shadows. I mean, that looks pretty good right there. And see, as you can see right here, you can move your light source. Let's say you want it more overhead. It makes the adjustments for you. Move it down. It's making those same adjustments. So a lot of different options you can do. You can do this one. You can do spotlight. You can do point source. And then there's also these other properties. You can change how bright you want it, how much contrast, or that's almost like the intensity of how much um, you want your light source to be in there. So I think this is a really nice feature, especially if you didn't think you lighted your uh, scene or your subject properly. You can go in and make the adjustments and emulate almost like a light, and then you can just change whatever settings you need to bring in that fill or add a little bit more to your key light. Okay, so for the next feature in DaVinci Resolve I'm gonna talk about, it's this new depth map. Pretty much all it is is you can select what region of depth you want and then just make color adjustments, lighting adjustments to just that region. So I'm gonna show you how to set up the node tree and this is how I use it. So going back to the screen now, on node tree, it's pretty simple, same one as the last one. I have my CST, go into my LUT, the first one is just primary, it's really simple. And so all I'm gonna do now, I've already made the adjustments I wanted and what I'm gonna do is gonna disconnect this and then I'm gonna just add two serial nodes after that. And then at this point, I'm gonna just apply depth map into this one. And then from there, I'm gonna connect this one to the fourth node. And then as you can see right here in the second node, the depth map will pop up on the screen. And so at this point, you can make any adjustments. So how to understand this. So the black part is what is not selected. And then the white part is what will be selected. And so at this point, you can um, select your map level. So if you want to change that, you click adjust map levels. And this will change your far limit of how far out you want it. So let's say I don't want to get the back of that garage. I just go out until it's black all the way. And then near limit, it's just how close. So as you can see, there's somebody right here close to the screen. And then if I want to change, it, change that, you know, I can make the adjustments for that as well. And so um, there's different like isolation effects. So if you want to get one person specifically, you can click that um, and just get that one person in that certain depth field. And then also one thing to do is when you have your region selected in your second node, you want to collect this or select this alpha point from this blue um, little square and connect it to your third node. And then from there, any adjustments that you make, you have to make in your third node now. So let's see. So I'm gonna go to my second node. I'm gonna turn off the depth map preview up here. And then that will disable like that certain viewing mode. And then I go to the third node and I make the adjustments. And just to note, I'm just gonna be changing um, like this person in the foreground 
and um, the person here in the subject. That's the only thing I selected. And so as you can see, if I go to like my gamma, it's only gonna change with them. And then nothing else like in the background or anything. So I can change that certain region of field and just make the certain color adjustments so I can you know, expose them a little bit more or want to change something. Let's say I want to just blur that region. Um, it's really nice because you can change your blur. See, as you can see, you can change the blur. And then you can also add like a effects where you can just totally like pixel blur it. It's just really awesome because you can only change that what you have selected. So I'm just going to turn that off. So back to the first node. Um, Let's say I just want to change, you know, maybe the shadows in only his arm. You know, I'm just going to bring the shadows down and have that. But let's say I don't really want to change the subject. So I'm just going to go back, back to that second node, turn my preview back on, and then change out that far limit. And take him out of the picture. And then just go turn that off, go back to my second one and then boom every all the changes will just be made only to this foreground man in the subject or this man in the foreground yeah super nice feature um, especially if you want to relight you know your background or if you want to relight your subject you want to blur them whatever um, this is a really nice feature just for utilizing certain depth and um, how you want to kind of just relight your whole scene all right, so keeping it short, these are our top four features that we love in DaVinci Resolve 18.5. If you guys like to see more, make sure you guys comment and subscribe, and we have a lot more videos coming out soon. So make sure you guys stay tuned.